Hello everyone, this is MMA Interesting Prospects Podcast. Today our guest is Kale Moniz, who won his fight on Tough Enough 133. Hello, Kale, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Uh, Kale, you in your last fight defeated, uh, I think that overall a good fighter, it, it was Anvar Boynazarov, the, the Contender Series veteran. You stand with him for a little bit and on the ground you finish, finish him quite quickly. So if you can tell me more about this performance and, and how your camp was going for, for this fight. Uh, I felt like I wanted to stand a little bit more with him just because of all his background with glory kickboxing and all, all the top guys that he's fought so far. But I got I got hit in the nose and I just kind of reacted to change up the game plan a little bit. Uh, we did a lot for the, for, for the training camp. We did a lot of wrestling. I finished the last two weeks of training camp at uh, Extreme Couture. And that was a blessing because I got a lot of good work in with a lot of high level guys. And I think that that like for your resume is it's quite a big win because he was a contender series veteran. So it means that if you can beat him, you you should be like on this on this level, like uh, one step to to uh, close to to be in the UFC. Definitely, that's how I feel. Um, I felt like. Uh... Getting wins against high-level guys will get me noticed quicker because I'm not getting any younger. Uh, I just want to I want to test myself and see if I can hang at the top level with all these uh, big name guys. And do you have a contract with uh, Fury FC? Uh, not yet, but uh, I've told my manager that I, w- I would love to fight with Fury again. I just I just love Texas. Uh, I told my wife if we ever move out of Hawaii, Texas would be the place. Uh, cost of living is cheaper, good training out there, and uh, people are real nice, good food. So, so I, I love Texas. And I think that your your like best performances were in the Fury FC because you defeated Josh Walker, Shane Torres, even a Carlos Vera fight was was even if uh, the result wasn't good, but overall the, the the fight it was like like you you were really close to to win this. Yeah, um, Carlos is very crafty. Uh, he made the fight more towards. Uh, the the style that he wanted to, you know, instead of me just con- controlling what I g- could do, uh, kind of panicked in that guillotine and uh, didn't really do what I needed to do to get out of it. But uh, I felt like I was winning that fight. I felt like I could have put more pressure. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a fight that made me think about how I want to fight and just go after a win, you know, not not sit back and wait for it. And when would you like to to fight next? Uh, I, I was asking Fury. I was asking Eric if I could get on a card in December. They asked me to fight uh, Smotherman on the 12th in a main event fight, but it's me and my wife's uh, wedding anniversary that weekend, and she uh, she sacrifices enough for me to do this sport, so I couldn't couldn't take that away from her. But, uh, but but I think that if the Fury FC uh, like decided to give you this fight, maybe the next two or three months later you will get it, especially the, because of your great performances earlier in this promotion. I hope so. I mean, I, I, I mean right now I'll fight anybody. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, anybody with a good record, anybody can get me to the next level. Uh, that's who I want and. I'm not a big shit talker. I got a bunch of friends over here that told me I should be calling out a bunch of guys in Texas, but uh, I don't. It's not my style, and uh, I want to. I know Eric's gonna pull through and get me somebody. So um, fingers crossed for that. But I think that that your uh, fighting style is great for defense because we are the finisher. You you always looking for, looking for for the finish. So I think that. This is a good, good, good thing. Not maybe not shit talking, but but uh, but but your style and like going for the finish. Uh, definitely, that's what I. That's what caught me up in that Carlos Vera fight. Uh, I took his back in the third round, and instead of um, instead of holding that position on the side um, and getting some punches off, I went straight for the back and went straight for the rear naked, 
And I think he was baiting me for that. If if I just held on to the hip and let some, let some punch, big punches go, I think I could have softened him up a little bit. But but he's a real crafty fighter, so I went straight for the finish, like I always do, and uh, made me learn a lesson right there. And if we can uh, talk a little bit about your beginnings in the sport, was uh, MMA the, the first combat sport that, that you sport that you ever trained, or do you have a any, any kind of uh, background from another sport? Uh, I played uh, when growing up. I played football and baseball, but when I started fighting, I started with boxing. So I just did boxing for like the first couple years, and then my boxing coach asked me if I wanted to fight, and. Uh, I asked him if he thought I was ready. He's like, hell yeah. I was like, if you think I'm ready, let's do it. And uh, after my first fight, I, I walked out to that fight and one of the other fighters pulled me down, pulled me on the side. And he asked uh, he asked me if uh, this was my first fight. I told him, yeah. And then he had told me, he's like, you'll be addicted after this. And and ever since then, I never stopped training. It was the, probably the most addicted feeling I've ever had. Better than any drug, better than alcohol. Um, it's just it's just a just another kind of high. And early in your career, you had uh, two year breaks, uh, I believe. And was it uh, like uh, some reason behind it, or, or just it happened that that you can't get a, a fight? Uh, yeah, it's more of a, in Hawaii. It's hard to it's there, we have so few shows. You know, we have maybe two to three shows a year. Uh, and it's different islands too, so you have to go fly over to another island. And it, it wasn't my full time job. I have I got I work at the hotel for full time job. I got family to support, so you know it's things don't line up that way. But um, I really wanted to be active this year. Um, I had like three fights fall through this year until I got that uh, Anvar fight. So that's uh, so why I really I really wanted one more this year. Uh, and what is the the main gym that you right now training in? Uh, I train at Kendall Grove's gym uh, at an INI training center. Uh, that's pretty much my main gym that I go to right now. And Kendall Grove had a like amazing career in in MMA, like in the UFC. And after the the UFC, he fought for the Bellator title, fought in KSW. So he's probably a like like legend in Hawaii. Oh, definitely, definitely, um, definitely. Uh, good to have a coach that's really willing to mix it up with me. Uh, he's he's always training. He's trying to he try he spars with me. He he rolls with me. Um, so it's it's a blessing to have him in my corner. And like watching your fights, it it's like hard to say like what kind of background you you have because you are very good in in every area in boxing, in striking, in in grappling, takedowns. So if you can like improve one of the areas of the game, what would you like to to choose and improve? Um, I like I want to improve my wrestling. Uh, that's why when I went to Extreme Couture for the last two weeks of camp, they they do a whole lot of wrestling there, and I felt like it uh it really boosted my game, getting to mix it up with all these high level guys. Yes, and the the wrestling was on the display because it was one one quick takedown, and actually you won a fight after a few a few, a few seconds. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a uh, uh, real um what you call. It was a real, uh, a lot of hard work built up to that. So it was nice to see it come, uh, my wrestling come through in the time that I needed it. And I think that right now you, you like from fans perspective, you are on the, the best shape of your career. And do you think that there is a chance for you to be in the UFC in 2024? I hope so. I mean... Dana White's always saying he doesn't sign guys over 30. Um, but I'm just hoping that he sees that my record's not too not too big. I haven't fought a whole bunch. It's, uh, and, and I've fought a lot of high-level guys. So I'm just hoping he gives me a shot. And uh, I just want one shot, you know, take advantage of that one chance I get and show the world what I have. Yes, I think that, that like... Uh... 
seeing your age maybe is like a little bit disadvantage for you, but watching that who you fought and all your overall skill, I think that that there should be no question that that your place should be in the UFC. I appreciate that. I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm I'm always hoping. I'm pushing. You know, always get trying to get the finish. Just because that's what the UFC wants. You want to see you guys get finish finishes. So. As long as I can keep this train rolling, keep these wins piling up, and uh, keep getting finishes, uh, hopefully one, one soon will be in there. And uh, earlier, Bellator did uh, many shows in Hawaii. And did you uh, did you get any chance uh, f uh, to fight for Bellator? No, they didn't call me. Uh, they're surprising. I thought they would at least ask, you know. But uh, yeah, I didn't get any call from Bellator. I wasn't under any management at the time either, though. I just signed with uh, Ruby's Entertainment uh, Fighting uh, right before this past fight. Um, he's been pushing for me. Uh, he's come through because when I was in Vegas, I had to get a whole bunch of stuff done. So he really helped me out get through, getting through and getting on that tough enough card. And do you have a fighter, let's say, in the UFC that you would like to face, like in the dream fight scenario? Hmm. I'm not sure. I just I would I would love to fight anybody at 35, uh, even 25 if if I had the chance. Uh, and I've I've cut to 25 one time, and it was a pretty hard cut. But uh, um, I just say anybody. I, I I would love to fight anybody in the UFC in front of a big crowd or in the apex. Uh, this would be a dream come true, and I just want to show what I got. And the crazy thing is, is that the bantamweight division is so deep that probably the fighter like from the top 30 is still so so skilled that he can be like top 10 guy. And then oh, I, I think that right now the bantamweight division is, is the best one. Yeah, really exciting, uh, especially with uh, the ch uh, belt changing hands. Um, I feel like uh, with, with O'Malley at the top is just... Real exciting for the for the division. Uh, I think that Marab, Marab is probably the next guy in there that that'll get that belt. I, I think he has the tools to beat O'Malley. Uh, we'll see. But uh, I met Marab after the fight, uh, after this last tough enough fight, and I told him I was like, "Go get your belt, man." Uh, I see his hard work. You know, I see that. I see his uh, true true self when he didn't want to fight Aljamain. I mean, that's your teammate. I, I see I see what he means. And uh it should be his shot next, you know. And were you uh, surprised that that Sean O'Malley won against Sterling? I thought it would be a little harder fight. Uh I thought Sterling would get get to him, get to his legs, get him on the ground a little bit. But man, that that length is crazy. He's so tall for the division and uh, that pullback right hand is beautiful and and taking nothing away from him, but he, he's a real skilled striker. So it was nice. It was a beautiful right hand. And also, I think that that it's not good that uh, Al Jamain uh, lost. But from the the perspective of, of Merab, it's good that uh, right now he can fight for the title, uh, fight uh, with with Sean O'Malley and Al Jamain Sterling as one of the best bantamweights ever. He can go up mm -hmm. and try try to take uh, another belt. Maybe of course he is after he he lost his last fight, but still he's one of the of, of the best. Yeah, and um, Al Jamain walks around and like. 170 something pounds that's crazy I, I don't know how he makes 35 you gotta cut so much weight that's uh i the highest i get is probably around maybe 60 that's when i'm not doing anything and eating everything but uh yeah i just find it crazy that aljo walks around at like 170 175 and gets down to 35 so i'm thinking he'll be a lot stronger at 45 and uh his cardio will be even better at 45 now that he's gonna have to make that big cut to 35. And do you have a, any like uh, fighter uh, inspiration? That fighter that you like uh, look uh, that you like watching his fight, and he inspire you, inspires you in some way. I like watching uh, Max Max a lot. Uh, just the pressure that he brings. Uh, I like watching Volk. Volk is a. Uh, I like watching Volk's training videos because um, just he just works so hard and. Uh, 
His his board pressure is ridiculous. His skill level is top notch, and uh, I'm, I would got I have to say, I like watching Volk. Um, probably Volk and Sean Strickland right now, just the two the two top guys that I like watching. It's just Strickland's ridiculous. Uh, I love his mindset. I love um, I love, I got to meet him when I uh was at Extreme Couture, and you know he's such a good guy. Taking pictures with everybody with his belt. Um, uh, just you know, he's like you see him on the internet and all of this, but when he's in the gym, he's really for his team and he he works super hard. So I gotta say, those two are my favorite to watch right now. And who, in your in your opinion, is the the best fighter from Hawaii? Because there there are usually yeah, two names: J. Penn and Max Holloway. It's got to be Max. Uh, Max is just on another level, you know. You can see if if Volk wasn't around, Max would still be champion. Uh, he, he, his striking, his his cardio, is freaking. It's on another level. Uh, it's it's a blessing to watch him fight. Um, he's a he's a good family man, good dad, you know. And uh, I really look up to that kind of thing. Yes, and he he uh, like lost three fights to Volkanovski, but the second one is like super super controversial. It's like mm -hmm. most people uh, always said that that Max won, won the the second fight. Yeah, but but that third fight was really one sided, though. You know, uh, I felt like Volk turned it up a notch in that third fight. So uh, you know, that second fight could have gone either way. I I thought Max won that second fight. But but man, that third fight, I think like Volk went on another level to 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 win that fight. And you you have uh, like many years of experience in the sport. And do you have uh, like one one advice for younger fighters uh, when they they start start to train or they they thought about becoming an MMA fighter? Uh, take as much amateur fights as you can. Amateur fights don't count, so. That's where you gain all your experience. Try new things. Try wrestling. Try, try, try everything you want to try. You know, you know things that don't really work for you in the gym. You should still try it when you're an amateur. That's why I just take as much amateur fights as you can get before you turn pro. That's that's probably one big big thing that I would tell people coming up. Yes, because not not many people like uh, like uh, see the amateur record, and even if you are like four and four or something like the, this, you can still be undefeated as the pro. Mm -hmm. And and everybody is like uh, only like look at a professional record. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that amateur record would, doesn't matter. So I tell I tell all the young fighters that when they get a loss in an amateur in an amateur rankings, um, it, it doesn't matter. You know. It's, build on it, learn, and move on. <clears throat> and how do you deal with this stress be before your fights? Oh, man, I'm... I like how um, Cowboy Cerrone puts it. He, like, everything is all balled into one, you know. I'm scared, nervous, excited. Uh, all those feelings, all butterflies, all rolled up into one. But uh, as soon as the door closes, it's... It's like a little switch that turns on, you know. It's like, it's it's weird. I I I, always, I tell my wife that it it's a it's a crazy feeling to 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 see it flip over as soon as the cage door closes, because it all goes out the window. It turns into, I guess, fuel things that will keep me sharp, keep my mind sharp in there. So I just I just think it turns over on its own, you know. And uh, let's say that you are after the fight. Uh, do you have uh, any like hobby or or way of the spending time when you are not in the training camp? Uh, usually just with my kids and my family. Uh, I'm always training, so I'll, I'll take maybe two or three days off and I'll be right back in the gym. My wife hates that, but uh, I feel like at my age, I need to do it. I, I have to stay ready. Uh, anything, any a call can come at any time. So, yeah, just we go to the beach. You know, we go up to the freshwater ponds. We go swimming. Uh, not much to do in Hawaii, but but those things. But uh, yeah, I try to try to keep my kids happy. 
and uh, enjoying life. And uh, like in your career, you 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 are close, in my opinion, to to sign to to UFC. You fought against tough guys. And do you have any like anything that you would like to accomplish still as the MMA fighter? I just want to fight in front of twenty thousand people. I always tell Kendall, I always I always ask him, was like, how does it feel walking out and fighting in front of in front of thousands? And he's like. He's like, there's no other, there's, that's the best feeling in the world. He's like, he's like, I still get chicken skin thinking about it. And I, I just, I want that feeling at least one time, you know, I just, just, just let me get a taste of it. And I, I know I'll be hooked. I know when the lights are at its brightest, I, I fight at the best. The pressure is on, I, pressure, pressure creates diamonds and I love the moment. So I think that 2024 would be a perfect moment for this feeling. Uh, definitely. I'm hoping, you know, keeping my fingers crossed and hopefully it comes through. Hopefully I get a call and um, I try to make the best of it. Uh, and I have a, a last two questions, but it's uh, outside of fighting. Uh, if you can uh, like change one of your personality trait or improve, what would you like to choose and improve? Uh, just being probably more out there. Like I'm, I'm pretty reserved. Like I love, I'm a homebody. I love being at home. You know, I don't want, I don't like being around a lot of people. Uh, so that's kind of one thing that I think I should work on, but, uh, it is what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty far along in my life already, so I'm, I'm not going to change for anybody. Uh, that's pretty one of the only things I think. And the last question: If you have an unlimited amount of money and you can start any business in the in the like world, what do you would you like to like create and own? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. If I got if I got all that money, I probably donated to. A, to some Lahaina people, you know, we had all our wildfires out here. I would try to donate it, uh, building homes, you know, just kind of something like, you know, something along that way is just try to help out my community. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty much just try to help out the community in any way I could, you know. Uh, yeah, I think that's the, that's the, probably the main thing I would do. Okay, Kale. So many thanks for for the conversation. I hope that that you will let's say win one more fight, and next year it would be perfect to to see you in the UFC because I think that time for you is now, and and the overall skill uh, about overall skill you you should be there. There is like not many question about it. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Uh, uh, till next time. Hopefully, it's another interview when I'm in the UFC. You know. Yes, definitely. We'll do it.